welcome to the next part of our tutorial um, talking about texturing on this and there's actually one more thing that I think I forgot to do and this answers one of the questions of uh, well not really a question but it, it solves this problem because you can actually see inside the thread and I forgot to do that in the last one and I'm sorry about that but it's actually a relatively easy fix just go into uh, the Bezier curves um, thing here and go into edit mode and we're going to just hit E and move it up a little bit and then move this down and replace that, put that back there if that makes any sense. So now we just created another point in here and we're going to move it right in here a little bit below this and we're going to create, we're going to make it kind of small so it doesn't have a very long, this is like the effectivity range I guess and so if this one has a lot more, it's going to be stronger um, influence upon anything in here. So it's like really strong here, and then it gets weaker, 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 and then it's all the way this. But because it's smaller, it shifts it this way. So that this is still strong all up until like right here somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the center of this one and drop it all the way down to zero. Now I've just created it into going down there. And you, if you can see that it's got a little bit of a crack left in there, you can just keep narrowing it down. Down there. Okay, and now we're going to do that with the bottom as well. Only this one's easier. We can just hit E and make move it down a little bit. And uh, make this one not powerful. And move this one up. And now we're going to just drop this one all the way down to zero. And you can see it didn't do anything, and that is because this is this is above this point. So we just need to move that up. And voila. We're good to go. Okay, now we're good to texture. So there's a couple of things we have to do before we actually texture this. And one of them is we need to make it one object. You can see that this is completely separate from that and so what we need to do is we need to apply these things. So let's go ahead and apply the subsurf modifier. Uh, apply the boolean. So now if we move this, it, the boolean stays there. Before, it would have not stayed there. Um, we're also going to click on here and apply the screw and the curve. And the only thing is, is when you do these things, you can no longer edit it. So if I were to go in here into, into the curve now, it does absolutely nothing anymore because we just accepted it. So we can get rid of the Bezier curve actually. We can just delete it. Uh, we can also delete the cube that we hid. Uh, the one that we used for the boolean. And now you can see we have two remaining objects here. What we're going to do is we're just going to hit um, right click on one and hit shift and right click on the other and hit control J. Now we have one object. Um, now it's pretty easy to work with. We can just move it around and have no worries with it. And there's no modifiers. And so if we hit tab, you can see that all of those different vertices are all in that one object, and there's a ton of them. But that's okay, because our computer can handle it. So first off, let's split our screen up so that we can uh, see a little bit more of what's going on with that. So right now, let me pull up the image so that you can see what we're working with. We're trying to get this like really glossy metal texture and it's actually really easy. It's not that hard at all. So just go in here, make this the node editor and hit uh, new. Make sure you're in cycles render because it works best in there. And then just to uh, make it so it's easier to see what's going on, let's stage it a little bit. So. I'm going to split this so that I can always keep um, my camera view open and um, maybe I should do this so you can see what I'm doing a little bit. So now you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing here. But first off this is just my camera view and um, this one is still a camera but now it's not. I'm going to get rid of the side thing so I can make it a little bigger more working space and easier for you to see. So we're going to stage it a little bit. I'm going to hit shift A, add mesh plane and make it big. This is going to be like our floor. Um, 
can make that pretty big. We can make this a little bit smaller. Move it up on top of the plane. And then we're just going to hit 1, hit Shift D, right click, R90. We have a back wall. Go 7, Shift D, right click, R90. And we have a side wall. And so now we just have this basic little staging area. And let's put our screw on the floor. So I'm going to go into wireframe mode so we can see the plane easier. I'm going to hit R90 negative. Um, I just want it to be facing this way so that's why I put negative. You don't actually have to put negative. And I'm going to put it right there close to the edge here. And now I'm going to rotate it. And I don't want anything going below that line. But I want it touching it as much as I can. So you're going to have to work with it. And I think that's as good as I'm getting it. <clears throat> and then you can rotate it a little bit that way maybe. I'm going to hit 0. <clears throat> now I'm in the, uh, well maybe I'll go top view here. And I'll go over here and this will be the, now I'm just going to move my camera. If I hit G and I use, oop, go back into that. If I hit G and I use the middle mouse button, it's like a zoom almost. So I want to make the screw just fill up most of the camera so I can see what's going on a little bit easier. And I'm going to move it around, shift it. So if I hit R twice, it's like uh, looking around. If I hit R once, it rotates it this way. Just get, the, get it so that you can see this and this. So it doesn't have to be anything perfect. But I think I like somewhere in there. <clears throat> And then you don't have to do this, but I'm going to put this in rendered mode. It depends on if you have a graphics card or not. If you do, it makes it a little bit better. If you don't, not a huge deal. So <clears throat> I just put GPU here, so I'm good. But now what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the screw and we're going to just delete the diffuse. Oops, I'll do that. Just, just the diffuse, not the material output. I'm going to shift A and I'm going to put um, a shader and this is going to be one of the easiest shaders you ever did and that's because it's anastropic and just connect the dots and boom you already have a metallic surface on there um, the only thing that I'm going to do is I am just going to change some of these options here and so roughness because I mean, a screw is pretty shiny, like it's pretty smooth. Um, but if we increase this roughness to about 0.5, it becomes a little bit more screw like. It's not like that shiny. It's shiny, but it's not that shiny. Um, anastrophy, it's like how pointed the shininess is. If we were down closer to zero, <coughs> then it just becomes like a dull metal object but if you put like 0.5 or if you go 1 whoops 1 it's really shiny so I'm gonna put 0.5 rotation really doesn't do too much in this um, it just moves it around here so if you think it looks better one way than another you can but I'm just gonna leave it at 0 other than that like that's pretty much the gist of the uh, screw texturing. The only thing that, to make it look a little bit better, because that doesn't really look like too much of a screw right now, is the lighting. So if we go over here, I'm going to go into wireframe just so I can see stuff easier. Um, let me, I'm just going to create, I'm going to delete the lamp that we have, and you can see it goes a little bit dark. I'm going to hit shift A, and I'm going to add a lamp, or not a lamp, uh, I'm just going to add a mesh, a plane. And you're gonna be like, why are you adding a plane? And how's that gonna? Well, I'm just gonna make an emission. Um, it adds na more natural lighting, honestly. Um, and so when you do that, you can just go in here to the material tab, hit emission in there, and then you can actually change the color of that too if you want. Um, I think I'm gonna put it around 10 or so, and. Well, it begins to look a little bit more like a screw, just because it's more natural lighting. Uh, I'm just going to position it further away. 
and I'm going to create a simple three point lighting system here. So I just created it so that we have three different um, light sources and they're all pointing at this one. Um, I'm going to lower lower probably this one. Move that a little bit closer, rotate it. There's not really like a huge science. You just have to create those three different light sources to get rid of some of these unnecessary shadows. And then it makes the screw look more like there's um, lighting above head. So you pretty much right now you have a pretty good looking screw and you can rotate around it. You can move the screw if you want and it'll still look the same everywhere you put it. And so thank you so much for watching this video. We I hope that it has solved some of your maybe questions or concerns in, in texturing. That was the I guess the major focus of this video. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe or watch more of the videos that we have and um, hope to see you next time on Blender Know How. Bye bye.